so I'm a really lucky guy. Peter Huntley, who owns Stargazer Cast Iron, sent me this 13 and a half inch Stargazer Cast Iron Brazer. So he's calling it a brazer. Looks a little bit like a fry pan to me with double handle fry pan, but today I'm gonna to figure out what I'm gonna make in it. Hi, I'm Jed, this is Coke Culture. So this beautiful, gorgeous, brand new Stargazer brazer, that calling it a brazer, uh, Peter sent me one. I order Stargazer from Peter. I sell them in my retail stores and online. I love to promote Stargazer because I think it's one of the best cast iron cookwares on the market. And so when he was sending me a pallet of goods, he included this 13 and a half inch brazer and said, hey, fill your boots, check it out. And so this is brand new to me. I know a lot of people have had this on pre-order for a long time. This has been in development for, for actually several years. Uh, and I know Peter has torn his hair out trying to get this guy made exactly correctly. Uh, he is very, very particular when it comes to his design and when something is made in a certain way. Uh, I've learned, learned a lot from him. He is a industrial designer. Uh, he has been in the design side of housewares for quite a long time. Uh, and I've really enjoyed talking to him about the design of all different things, especially cast iron. Uh, and so when he brings something to market, you can trust that it's going to be made or designed to the very highest of qualities. And you know, out of the box, this pan looks tremendous. But I'm, I'm not perplexed, but I'm curious. Um, this brazier is 13 and a half inch double handled fry pan, really. Uh, it doesn't have a lid. And in my world, a brazier always has a lid. So I, I've talked to Peter for a long time about making lids for Stargazer because customers ask me all the time. So far, no lid. I know that he has them on his workbench, something that he's trying to figure out how to do it, what the right type is. So maybe this is something that will happen at some point in time. But for today, we're dealing with this open brazier. Uh, is a good way to put it. And it really, to me, it's like a roasting pan slash large fry pan. So I'm going to do some braising style in it. I'm going to use it basically as a roaster, but I'm going to create some liquid and we're going to brown some vegetables and then we're going to braise them in the oven for step one and uh, see how that turns out. So here we go. Okay, so first things first. This pan, this brazer is seven and a half pounds. And if we go from kind of tip to tail, it's 17 inches from side to side. And on the outer dimension diameter is 13 and a half. So that's the, the uh, diameter is what it's called. 13 and a half inch brazier is the outer diameter. The cooking surface here is about 10 and a half inches. So 10 and a half inches on the inner cooking surface and 13 and a half on the outer diameter of the pan. Uh, so those are the details of this guy. Let's get to cooking. Okay, so this guy is gonna go on to the induction hob and it's gonna be interesting to see that is a very large pan on my induction hob. It's going wide here. We're gonna see how the heat goes. I'm gonna give it maybe 10 minutes to preheat, medium low, and then I'm going to do a measurement on the outside of this pan and see what the difference is from center to the outside of the pan. Okay, so I got the pan heating up here, it's starting to get good and hot. Uh, I'm gonna do a temperature reading here in a sec. I've got a decent amount of veg, I've got some earth balanced butter, and we're going to do a braising style here. I'm going to do some pan frying, and then we're going to put it into the oven with some liquid. I'm gonna build the liquid to it so we have something to keep it moist and cooking in the inside, but we don't have a lid. That's our issue here, of course. So it's gonna be like a roasting dish, not so much like a braised dish, uh, which I think is gonna turn out great, but it's just technically, it's gonna be more roasted than braised. Uh, but I will put a decent amount of liquid in with the veg. Okay, so this has been about 10 minutes. We're going to do some reading here. So we've got there in the middle, chasing 300 degrees. And there's a 300 around the edge. And down as far as, what is that, 150, 135. So pretty cool around that one edge where it goes off of the element. Still working on the induction, which is great. But the outer edge 
is much cooler than the inside. Which is going to happen on a gas range also. It's not going to be perfectly consistent. But it's kind of all over. And I've given this 10 minutes or so of preheat. But it's just, it's a massively big pan for an induction top. So it's going to do the job just fine. We're going to get the kind of the beginning of the browning of the veg. And then we're going to get it into the oven for the cook. So there we go. It's a hot pan. Definitely hot in the middle. Get some veg in there right away with that butter. Bring it down just a little bit. So the veg going in here is going to help regulate the heat just a little bit. And with that butter, just gonna let that start to brown away in there. And we'll let that cook and turn a couple of times just to brown things just a little bit. See if we do get a bit of browning. And then we're gonna do a full cook. We're gonna get some moisture in there and then we're gonna get that whole thing into the oven. Okay, once I start getting more of an even heat from it um, and the, the coolness of the vegetables kind of regulated the pan, I turn the heat back up to it. So I now have it on like a three quarter heat just to try to get some browning. What we want to do is try to get a bit of browning and, and flavor on the pan before we get it into the oven. Okay, so things are starting to brown a little bit. The rutabaga is actually browning a little bit more than I wanted it to, but it's gonna to be totally fine. So I'm gonna get the salt and the pepper and some thyme in there now. So probably uh, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of thyme, and probably a quarter teaspoon of pepper, somewhere around there. Okay, so we've got 250 mils of water here. I'm not going to get too much in, but I don't want too little either. So yeah, I'm going to do the whole thing. So 250 mils of water. And that's in there. Turn the heat off. Okay. So now that's going into the oven. Okay, so a beauty with this on induction is that I can just grab it by the handles. So that is still not too hot, but it's a preheated 350 degree oven. And I'm gonna put it in there for, I don't know how long. I'm going to just start testing things after maybe half an hour, 35 minutes. And I uh, just want things to be, start to you know, caramelize, get some deep flavor. Uh, and we'll take a look at it and uh, see when it looks like it's going to be done. All right, so we're going to check this guy out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, things are just cooking away. There's just that amount of water was just perfect. Just a certain amount of water down there. And yeah, things are starting to soften up and smell fantastic. So nothing's cooking too quickly here. Everything's starting to soften, which is really nicely. And we're just going to let it continue going. It's probably been 20, 25 minutes so far. Okay, so while I was waiting for the veg, I made a little kind of thickened roux gravy that my daughter asked for, because I'm actually making my daughter some food here. And uh, so this was a simple uh, mushroom and miso uh, cream sauce, basically, uh, with butter, flour, and milk, um, all plant-based, but it doesn't have to be plant-based. It all turns out exactly the same. Okay, so we're gonna go into the oven, pull this guy out. It's been in here for, I'd say, 40 minutes or so altogether. There we are, looking fantastic. So got some juice at the bottom, so it hasn't gone dry. 
but everything's just starting to get to a point where it's well cooked and not mushy. So everything's great. So what we're gonna do now is that we are going to get some rice. So we've got some brown rice. A little bit of brown rice. I'm gonna grab some veg. Get a bunch of veg into there. And then we're gonna do this cream sauce, mushroom, kind of roux gravy over top. And so that is, is that one looking great. So, so far the pan is looking great. So the bottom is excellent. It's in great shape. It's cooked nice and evenly. Um, you know, it wasn't too big for the induction, but it's great. So test number one for this guy is, is awesome. There we go. So yesterday's experiment with the Stargazer pan, Stargazer breezer, roaster, whatever we're gonna call it. Uh, it turned out great. It, uh, it performed well, uh, it cleaned up beautifully, super fast. Um, super happy with it. It was nice to be able to do that kind of volume of uh, vegetable in there. So this morning, uh, Sunday next day, uh, I'm going to now roast a cauliflower and I'm gonna also do that with a bunch of yam and I'm gonna do a curried mixture uh, on top and we're just gonna roast them off. Okay, so I've got uh, two large yams that I've just chopped into large pieces. I'm going to throw some olive oil and some curry powder on there and then we're just gonna mix them up uh, in a stainless steel bowl, a really rough mix um, with two bowls put together like a clamshell and then we're going to slather the cauliflower with some olive oil and a little bit of maple syrup and curry powder. Okay, olive oil, curry powder, maple syrup, salt, and just rub that all in a little bit. Okay, and then yams. Okay, and now 375 degree preheated oven. Let's get it in there. You're gonna probably put it in there for an hour at least. Uh, it's gonna be a visual thing. Well, it's gonna smell amazing also, but it will be a visual thing. When that cauliflower starts to kind of reduce in shape and starts to really brown and get soft on the outside, you can also put a fork or a knife right into it. And if it just goes in and has the same texture as you go all the way through it, you know it's done. And when that one is done, the yams will also be done. And again, those are gonna be visually, you're gonna be able to tell. Okay, so freshly out of the oven, this looks absolutely fantastic. So we'll take a good close up right here. So the yams are beautifully done. Everything is cooked really nice and evenly. And that cauliflower is looking tremendous. So we're gonna get this uh, out of the pan onto the chopping board and serve it up. Okay, so we're gonna get this guy out of here onto the cutting board 
and serve up a couple of these beautiful yams. And I have made a tahini, uh, apple cider vinegar, uh, and syrup and nutritional yeast dressing to go with it. Okay, so the pan got some nice coloring on it on the bottom, but this is going to clean up easy peasy when we take it to the sink with some chain mail. But the uh, look of this bottom of those guys have been fantastic. So no blackening or burning, just some nice sweet flavor on those guys. All right, just wonderful, perfect cook. Okay, so as you can see, the color is a little bit mottled, and this is part of being a new pan. I've also cooked a bunch of veggies, not a lot of regular type of fatty food. So what I'm gonna do with the oven still hot from cooking the veggies, I'm going to use a Cook Culture seasoning paste. You can use any sort of a vegetable oil here. Seed oil is fine. And get that onto the pan. I'm then gonna bake it for an hour at 425 degrees and just cook in that season again and keep building that because I'm finding that the, the heat isn't consistent on this stovetop for how wide this is so oven is my method so that is ready to go into the oven Okay, so she is done. I'm being a bit impatient. There it is there. Looking fantastic. A little bit impatient because uh, leaving it in the oven to cool would have been ideal. Uh, but this is fantastic. The, the pan has worked amazingly well. I'm excited about everything that it cooked. It looks wonderful. Used a few times. It's only going to get better and darker and richer as it goes and it's a really nice size for some of the things that I do. I use a roasting dish for a lot of this so everything that I'm doing here is is roasting uh, really not braising uh, but you know that's what it is. It, it, he calls it a braising pan it can be used for braising I'm using it as a roaster if that's what it leans towards me for but it is a really really nice big pan. I'm excited about the summertime and getting this outside open flame, so either on the barbecue or right on to an open fire. I think it's gonna be a fantastic size for cooking for large food groups outside in the summer. So really, really excited about using this pan. You know, it's definitely not gonna be a daily pan for me, but I will utilize this and it will be part of my collection. So thank you so much to Peter for that. The pan is absolutely amazing and I'm pretty sure they're available now. They were on pre-order from Peter for a long time. A lot of people waited patiently for them. He had some things he had to work out, but I'm pretty sure that they are available on his website now. So I will link that in the notes below. So thanks so much. Questions, comments below. Take care. Okay, so what do you think? How is it? Hmm? Give me uh, out of ten. Mm -hmm. It's a solid nine. Oh, fantastic. Maybe a ten. <laughs>